Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chell and this is Chell Reads a Bit. I have not done a sit down video like this in a long time. I know, I know, it's been a bit, but here we are. We're finally here and I'm very late in doing this end of year video. It's been the end of the year for a while now. It is January 30th at the time of me filming this, I know. Better late than never though, but is this anything new with me? Not at all. I am going to be doing my best books of 2023 video and then look forward to my worst books of 2023. But today, right now, it's the best of 2023. Let's start it off positive, why don't we? But before we get into the best books, if you enjoy my videos, please feel free to give a like and subscribe. I would love to have you. It really makes my day and I love seeing you here. And let's just get into the best books of 2023. Now, let me just... 2023 wasn't necessarily the best reading year. I did a lot of rereads, a lot of mediocre books, a lot of a lot of DNFs and everything. So not the best, best reading year, but you know, we got there in the end. We had some great books, some spectacular books, and we're, I'm going to go into those today. I hope you are excited because I am excited to talk about them. If you see me looking at something, I am looking at my handy dandy bullet journal. So bear with me. Um, but I'm gonna go in the order in which I put them in the list, which is, I think, in the order in which I read them. Or they, ha like, got read in the year. And bear with me because I don't have my glasses on because the glare from the ring light would be too much, so. The first one, I know early January of 2023. So there's 25 volumes of this manga series. I read 24 because I had read the first one in December. But I read all of the rest of them in January, and that is Kami Samakis. Technically, I finished all 25 volumes. And uh, I've made a video, which I'll leave linked, talking about my review or like my thoughts and feelings on the the manga series. I talked a little bit about the anime as well. And I just loved it. I had seen the anime a long time ago, loved it. There's only two seasons out, but there's a lot more content in the manga than what the anime has. I don't know if they're ever going to do another season, but that's just sad times, but it, it's okay. But the, I read the manga, loved it. It is so cute, so wholesome. Obviously, there are issues with it. It is a Japanese translated book. There are differences within cultural things, maybe things that we don't find acceptable here that they do in their books. So always go in, be wary of that when going into manga. There's a lot of phobia, things with like age gaps and all this other stuff that might not be fun for a lot of people. But I loved it and it just, oh, it really hit, it hit me in here. I cried at one point. I really, really loved it. It was sweet. It was cute. I loved watching Nanami grow into being the god that she was. She was amazing. And Tomoe, who was her familiar, oh my god, I love it. I recommend, again, be wary of going in, that there might be things that aren't necessarily good or great. Uh, you know, so just be aware of that. But I loved it. Be one of the best, technically it's a whole series, but best of 2024, uh, 2023. I literally gave all of the volumes five stars. Do they all deserve necessarily five stars? Were they all amazing, amazing? No, but I still loved all of them. So five stars to all of them. Then after that, I have The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axio. I had the fairy loot box back in the day, the YA one, and that's where I got it. And I was, uh, I brought it with me from the States finally read it and i loved it it was so cute it was so sweet i really loved the korean mythology the korean food the culture everything about it it was very much spirited away vibes and i'm not gonna be re really going on synopsis very often if i do great if i don't oh well i'm here to talk about what i liked about them so i really really loved it is it one that's really gonna stick with me forever no but i really enjoyed it at the time i still look back at it fondly was it the best written no was it the pacing a little off sure um was it predictable very much it it was just a stereotypical ya but i really i really messed i, I really gobbled it up when i read it or exactly what i needed at the time so 
I loved it. I loved it. I, it was like a high four stars. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like it or it's just midway for them and that's fine, but it just hit at a time when I needed it and I could connect with the main character in a certain sense um, um, in the story. So I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Next oh, is one that I just, oh, it hit. It, when it hits, it hits. And this one really hit. I love it. I, I'm so sad because I have the Fairy Loot Edition. And the US hardcovers have no dust jacket. And I'm really hoping I can get the US hardcover of the first one. And the second one just came out this month. So I really need those two copies because it's one of my favorite books. And I need to read the sequel. But I want to get that. Up. And if you don't know what it is. It's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. It, 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 it just... I loved it. I, I just something about the English scholarly academic writing style does it for me. Like their De Deanna Rayborn series, uh, Veronica Speedwell mystery series, kind of like that. But I really, it just Emily Wilde just was like, it, it's just about Emily Wilde trying to make this the first ever encyclopedia of fairies, and she goes to this really cold, wintry island. I, I don't know if it's an island. I forget, but um, to chron a chronicle this fae this this fae species that's never been written about before so she went she goes there to do that but she the way she is she's not very good at talking to people getting close to people so then comes in her rival at her college that she her university that she uh, teaches for and everything wendell i think his name is Wendell Bumblebee or something but oh my god I loved it I loved it. it is it kind of predictable is it kind of like it's not necessarily doing anything too crazy or out there but I loved it it hit so well I just I, I just loved it <laughs> like I love the writing style I loved how snarky and everything Emily was especially towards Wendell I loved how just sweet and wholesome Wendell kind of was and how uh, except he could also be pretty pretty sinister when he needed to be though just, just remember that but he, it was so uh, i just uh, i loved it i loved it i loved it and uh, it just it, it just was the kind of fairy story that i wanted and the writing style that i love so i just i totally recommend i know a lot of people either it's a, either love or hate it or they just are middle of the road but i loved it uh, best one of the best books i read in 2023 and and it's great when a fairy loot book hits because those are few and far between i don't have i don't get fairy loot anymore but when they hit they hit and i am just glad for that next book on this list is skyward by brandon sanderson and it's his ya sci-fi about a girl named Spensa, whose dad is deemed a traitor and she really wants to become a pilot and it's just her struggles because no one wants to have a traitor join so it's that's pretty much the first book her trying to prove that she belongs there and everything and it, i don't know what it was about this one but i really loved it. i did read the first book in the mistborn series and loved it so i was like i wasn't ready to move on to the next book in the mistborn so i was like well this is not connected to the cosmere so i was like i'll read this and i really really loved it i loved the writing style i loved mbot he was hilarious and i just i really i really was gripped into the story watching spence's struggles and everything was it was there some things that were annoying and predictable were yeah, but it was good. I really, 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 really liked it. I had a good time. Could you say the humor was kind of childish? Yes, but am I childish? Of course. So I was laughing. There were parts where I was just chuckling. I really, really, really loved it. And I'm excited to go on to the next one. I know that people say that by Cytonic it really goes downhill, but I'm, I, I still want to read it. I haven't gotten the f fourth and final one, and I get the bigger UK heart, uh, not hardcover, um, paperbacks, but money, so I haven't gotten it, but it's not a big deal. I have the three in the paperback, so I'll be fine, but I really, really enjoyed the first one. I know that people, I don't remember what people said about the second one, but I know they don't like Cytonic, so I'm nervous to get to that one, but I really loved Skyward, and 
I had to put it on one of my best books of 2023. And just to point out that um emily wilds was five stars and skyward i gave five stars what is it necessarily five stars no but i loved it i loved it at the time so it's staying five stars and i really 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 enjoy it i do like brandon sanderson's writing so loved it and last but certainly not least i read another fairy loot from the ya box that, that i used to get one that i was really really excited for when i first got the box which is why i brought it with me to the states and I've just been putting it off because I'm like, I, I feel like I heard Becca from Becca in the Books mention this. Like, you want to read it, or someone did. You want to read it so bad, but then you, like, don't want to read it immediately. So you you just keep putting it off. That's what I did. That's what I do. Like, I'm really excited for a book, so I want to leave it to last. I don't know. Don't ask me for a really in-depth analyze analysis of that because I have no idea. But <laughs> I was really scared especially since i'm not really into ya much anymore sometimes it really helps to read something e quick and easy but i was looking forward to this book and i was really nervous i wasn't gonna like it and it's once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber and ooh, we did i just gobble that up it hit the way it needed to and it was a ya i needed at the time is it the best no. Is the character kind of annoying at times? Yes. She is so naive. She's so impulsive. She literally will be like, this is probably a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then immediately is like, well, I regret that. That shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. Literally 0.5 seconds after doing it. I'm like, girl, you've done this already two other times. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? But regardless, I loved it. I still loved Evangeline Fox. I, I just really enjoyed it. I loved how sinister, I can't remember his name right now. I can't remember the name of the main guy, but he was sinister and everything, but oh my god. I just, I, I, I don't know, it just hit, I, we were playing our game and I wanted, every time there was a moment where I didn't need to be doing something, I wanted to be reading the book. And that is a sign of a good book. And if I'm like, I really want to read the next book immediately, then I know that it's a best book because that doesn't happen all the time. I'm like, ah, I'll read it maybe. But this one, I was like, I really, 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 really want to read it. I had it, but then I was in a slump and everything. So I was in a hangover, a slump. So I didn't end up getting to it, but I'm still very excited to read it and everything. So I do have that. I did have to get the paperback because I don't, I, got, I had the fairy loot edition. I don't have all the fairy loot editions. So it's sad, sad knowing now that I really, really loved it, but I do have the second book for whenever I get to it, but I just loved it. I loved the atmosphere. I just loved how, how just crazy it was. It was dramatic. It was drama. <laughs> and I was eating it up. Evangeline Fox just knows how to, to really make stuff go really wrong very quick. <laughs> but it was, it was cute. It was funny. It was... And it was dramatic, and I really had a good time. And, you know, sometimes you just need that. It, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect prose. It doesn't have to be perfect literature. But it just, you, when it hits, it hits, you know? It, it is what it is. It is the kind of book that it is, and I enjoyed it for what it was. And I feel like that's that's fine, and it, I, I, I think about it all the time. So... That is all the books I have for my best books of 2023. Sorry, it's all over the place. And that. It's been a bit since I've done a sit-down video, so I'm a little rusty. But hopefully it came out well. I do want to do my worst books of 2023, so look out for that. But that is all. 2023 was a rough reading year. I did not complete my goal on Goodreads, which is fine. But, you know, it is what it is. Just, you know, slumps. And life gets in the way, so... But those were one, two, three, four, five best books of 2023. Once Upon a Broken Heart, I did give five stars. And I don't give five stars easily. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. But that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys had a great reading year in 2023. More good books than bad. DNF is self-care, as I've heard Jess from Jess Owen say all the time. But... I hope you guys enjoy the video, and if you do enjoy my videos, feel free to give a like and subscribe. I would love to have you here. It really makes my day, and I love seeing you here, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.